Within the last decade, 96% of the kelp forests on California's north coast have disappeared. If 96% of the trees disappeared, that would be on front page news everywhere. I'm not gonna let another four years, I'm not gonna let another decade, another one year go by and watch more kelp disappear. I'm gonna do what I can every day to get out there and help. My name's Grant Downey, and I'm a California commercial sea urchin diver. I've been a commercial sea urchin diver for 14 years, and all of that's been done up here on the North Coast. So around the time I started diving, the kelp was so thick and healthy, just a few years later, there's minimal kelp. I, I can do dives all day and maybe see one piece. Kelp is found all over the world in cold water places, temperate reefs. And when you have an aggregation of those kelps, that is what makes a forest. All the way from the surface of the water down to the bottom, that three-dimensional area is covered in a diversity of life. So in addition to their ecological value as being a home for all the critters that you would want to see in a kelp forest, they are also carbon sinks. And what they do is they turn over carbon and create oxygen that we breathe. So their value to us cannot be understated. They are why we breathe. In Northern California, really what caused the kelp to decline were these anomalous, really warm water heat wave events that we call marine heat waves. At the same time, we saw sea star wasting disease hit. And it's still unknown like what actually happened with that disease, like what caused it and if it is even a disease. But what we do know is that billions of sea stars died in that event. And probably one of the most important species that was lost was the apex predator, the sunflower star, which has the ability to cruise through the bottom of the kelp forest at a really fast pace, eating tiny invertebrates. And one of those invertebrates it loves to eat are urchin. So when that kelp disappeared, urchins started changing behavior. And with the sunflower star gone, they changed behavior even more. And so they started moving into the nearshore environment, eating whatever kelp remained and displacing other organisms like abalone and red sea urchins. And so we had these multiple stressor events playing into each other with the warming of the water, with the loss of the apex predator. And what we ended up seeing was catastrophic loss at regional scales. My background was kelp forest ecology, and within the last few years, I've completely shift gears to start addressing how I can make this ecosystem not disappear. And that's really working with folks like Grant to make that happen. So when I'm diving and working for restoration, I take my bag underwater. I don't have an urchin rake. It's just my hands. I get to the bottom, I get to the reef. It's like a snowball. One by one, I just start collecting and raking these urchins into my basket. As soon as my little basket's full, I swim over and I'm dumping it into my bag. And then it's just on and on and on, because I'm never gonna run out of urchins to keep filling that basket to put in that bag. The purple urchins are wildfire underwater. So as our forests are being wiped out on land, they're being wiped out in the water as well. The big problem is the imbalance in the ecosystem. The huge population of the purple urchin, the lack of the sunflower star, and the lack of the kelp. I'm doing my part to try and reduce the amount of urchins that are grazing on what we have left here. We need another source of help to bring everything back in balance. My name is Claudia Ortiz. I'm a kelp researcher here at California Polytechnic Humboldt. And my research is looking at the growth rate of bull kelp on different seeding strings and looking at it from a lab to long line cultivation in Humboldt Bay. So how I'm looking at these different farming techniques is growing 
Volkalp from its early stages and then seeing how it grows as an adult out in the bay where we have our long lines and our farm system and see how it grows from spore all the way to full adult. The fact that we're able to grow this species not only in the lab but really see it grow out in Humboldt Bay in our waters just really brings the potential that it has for future applications. You know, it could be not just seen as a crop, but how can it be used for restorative actions, such as bringing back our forests uh, during declines. To be part of this team, it's just really exciting to make those connections, not just with other researchers, with the lab and growing it, but also how we can make a difference out in our waters. Knowing that 96% of the kelp has disappeared in the last 10 years is terrifying. So with all that in mind and all the effort and all the underwater time, I, I had to come up with another idea. I had to come up with another solution. The fact that there's no food for these urchins to eat, anything you missed in as little as an hour is congregated back on this one piece of food underwater. So why not set a trap that's gonna bring the urchins to it rather than me going and getting the urchins? And that's really where my trapping idea came from. And while they're soaking and they're collecting purple urchins, I could be diving for red sea urchins for the food market and then come in at the end of the day, pull my purple traps, and I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm harvesting a food product by picking the red urchins at a healthy site. And at the same time, I'm helping maintain the population of the purple urchins outside of our restoration zone. And both of them going hand in hand are gonna help bring the kelp back. I love what I do. I love working with creative people, excited people, and people who are dedicated to finding a solution. And that's honestly what keeps me going on this issue is knowing that I'm not the only one doing it. My life depends on a healthy kelp forest. It's the amount that the kelp does for everybody. The amount the kelp does sequestering carbon out of the atmosphere. The amount that kelp does by putting nutrients into the water for all these other animals live off of them. Day after day, I'm gonna go out and do my part to help the kelp come back. I'm not gonna quit. I'm not gonna let what we have disappear like the rest of it. I'm hopeful that the kelp comes back, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done.